Welcome back, Dram Fam, to review number three on the Whiskey Bible. So, what do uh, I think of the Glen Allocky 12? Let me explain. So this week we're going to be taking a look at the Glen Allocky 12. This is a 12 year old Speyside whiskey that's distilled and bottled by the Glen Allocky distillery. Now this is bottled at 46% as uh, I spoke about when reviewing the Fetiken 12 that was only bottled at 40. A lot of the more progressive distilleries now are bottling at 43, 46% and above which allows a lot more of the aroma and the flavor to kind of leave the glass. It just feels like there's a lot more going on with those higher ABV whiskies, in my opinion. So this is unchill filtered and all natural coloring, so no additives. It was aged in virgin oak, PX sherry cask and Oloroso sherry casks, which is what contributes to that fantastic color. You can pick a bottle of this up on Master of Malt at the moment for £37.85 for a 70 centilitre bottle. Let's talk a little bit about Glen Allocky. They didn't produce much of their own whiskey and it was primarily sold off for uh, blends and stuff like that up until 2017 when it was bought by a whiskey entrepreneur called Billy Walker who's had sort of things in Glendronach and Ben Ryak. He decided to start bottling their own spirit for themselves and selling it under the name Glen Allocky. When he did it, he reduced the spirit production from 4 million litres down to 500,000 litres. So one eighth of its original production. On their website, they have the quote, To focus on the important things, making great whiskey and enjoying life. And they have done just that. So this 12 year old is a bottling from their core range comprising of a 12, a 15, an 18, a 21 and a 25 year old. Each one of the whiskies in the core age statement range have a different colour scheme. On this particular one, the 12 year old, it's purple. So uh, let's have a taste shall we? But I've uh, had quite a few already. As soon as you stick your nose in this glass, it's rich, jammy, fruity, spicy, super full on. Just a, a, a touch of sourness that kind of keeps it smelling quite fresh. Very similar to sort of freshly expressed orange oil. If you ever had an old fashioned and you've seen them express the oils from an orange peel over the top, something similar to that. There's definitely like a boiled, sweet, kind of syrupy sugariness to it. Maybe something similar to agave nectar. Because it's got quite a herbaceous thing going on with it. There's definitely a, a really balanced, oaky woodiness that comes through as well. When I was uh, doing my research on this whiskey, I noticed someone uh, likened it to cola cubes. And that is spot on. You really do get a sort of cola cube essence coming through. So, uh, onto the palate. It is so rich and spicy and full on and fruity. Still got that freshness to it. That kind of slight sharpness that keeps it tasting fresh. It's got a nice boozy hit to it with some more of that sort of syrupy sweetness coming through. Yeah, definitely boiled sweets. Some of that herbaceous notes. Some of that sort of vanilla starts coming through as well. Maybe hints of baking spices and a distinct kind of cask funkiness. If you've ever had uh, Caribbean rum, and you'll know that kind of banana-y taste that comes through, which I, I kind of liken to cask funk, kind of a, a flavor from the esters it picks up in the cask. It's definitely got some of that coming through as well. Texture-wise, there's tons of it. It's thick and mouth-coating, and initially it's so fruity it kind of makes your mouth water and it coats it in sweetness but as soon as it goes you know for it's kind of this dry kind of tart bitterness left behind that kind of kind of makes you want to have another sip to kind of quench it 
It absolutely saturates your senses when it hits your mouth. Finish wise, there's a, a long syrupy sweetness that kind of gives way to kind of a, a fruitiness and a spiciness that kind of continues on. Starting to get maybe a, a slightly bitter chocolate note. Something like a cocoa nibs, if you've ever had those. They're kind of like a, a very bitter, dry chocolate flavour, but it's not its not like a sweet chocolate flavour. As I breathe out, I kind of get some of those oaky notes, maybe some of those raisin and sultana notes coming through. So given that this is bottled at a good 46%, I'm gonna stick a few drops of water in it and see what happens. So we're gonna go with two mil of water. With two mils of water, you're almost an, an aniseedy note. But if you've ever had perno, it's got that kind of woody aniseed flavor. Kind of coming through on the nose. It lightens that texture up a little bit. It's not quite so saturating, but brings forward some more of those woody notes. And definitely some more of those herbaceous notes kind of sit forward and it dials down that syrupy sweetness. Just a touch. So, in summary, this is hands down one of my favourite whiskies on the shelf. And for less than £40, um, I think you'll really, really struggle to find something as full, as rich and as big as this. It absolutely reeks of kind of quality and care and intention. It feels like this is a whiskey that's been designed to taste like this and it's been executed perfectly. It's the perfect balance of fruitiness and sweetness and spiciness with enough kind of, of a sourness to keep it feeling fresh. And all of that is underpinned by fantastic cask influence, like good cask funk, fantastic color. And all of those kind of funky notes and herbaceous notes just kind of evolve and develop. And for that reason, I give this a 9.5 out of 10. Highly recommend you uh, go and grab one of these before they uh, before they go. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick up one of these bottles from Master of Malt. And that's enough from me. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the uh, bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. And on that note, Salangevar. Thank you.